Okay, today we're going to do, I think about two mornings ago, uh, I woke up, you know, and you know, every time I ask the Lord for fresh word to his people. And I wasn't very sure what he wants to say. I woke up in early in the morning and then he said, okay, the title of your sermon for this week is The Miracle of Laughter. Oh, okay. <laughs> Laughter is a miracle. <laughs> All right. And it's revealed from the Hebrew name of Isaac. Okay, so we have, the Lord has wonderfully led us, all right, to go and search deep for treasure in the Bible on the Hebrew letters, right? We have God concealed and God revealed. And many of the wonders of God, who he is, and a lot of wonderful things have been hidden in the Hebrew letters. And God wants us to discover so that our lives can be blessed and transformed, right? To from the heavenly realm to here. And this has so much more meaning today, what it means by, you know, the spiritual realm, the heavenly realm, and we living that life on this earth, all right? Through learning the Hebrew letters. Yes? <laughs> okay, so let's go into today's sermon. Okay, all of you know who is Isaac. Isaac was one of the three patriarchs of Israel. Everyone knows Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And out of the three, only his name did not change. You realize that? Okay, God changed Abram to Abraham. God changed Jacob to Israel. But Isaac's name was not changed by God. And let's see why. So what does his name mean in the Hebrew language? Genesis 17, 19. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, will, give, will bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. So it was God who told Sarah that his name will be Isaac. And if you know the story a little bit of Abraham and Isaac, they couldn't conceive because they were beyond the age of conception. All right. I, Abraham was already too old and so was Sarah. So God told Sarah or told Abraham that to call their son who was a miracle son, right? Because at that age, okay, our Elijah is still young, right? <laughs> and so is Abigail. <laughs> but can you imagine Abraham is how many years older than you? He was 100 when finally, wow, 40 years older than Elijah. So you all look at Elijah. <laughs> and then Abigail, Sarah was... 90. Okay, we will not reveal the age right, of Abigail, but she's very young. So also another 40 years away. And that time, in the human natural way, all shriveled up already. Cannot, naturally cannot give birth already. Correct? Yeah. So, but the promise of God to Abraham is that God will bless him and he will have a son through whom the descendants will come out and actually the line of Jesus will come. It says, I will, you call him Isaac, his name, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So this is a promise and a covenant. Okay. Today we had Holy Communion, which is a covenant, okay, an agreement, signed, sealed, and delivered. All right. So let's look into Isaac's name, all right? Uh, because it's about the revelations of the Hebrew letters in their names. So Isaac is Ishak. Generally, it means he laughs or laughter. He's son of Abraham by, Sa <clears throat> by Sarah, his wife, and father of Jacob and Esau. Now let's look into the Hebrew letters and discover why God called him laughter. Because to English, in English, it's just one word, laughter. 
<laughs> okay, but in Hebrew, it's a, made up of a few letters, and we have been seeing how significant are these Hebrew letters, and how they can transform and change our lives and our perception of our God. All right. Okay. Isaac is spelled in Hebrew with four alphabets. Okay. One is Yud. Sadi, so you also we haven't studied in more in detail on Saturday. Last yesterday we came to only the eighth letter. But so far, are you all enjoying the alphabets? Yeah. A lot of revelation that can change our lives. Then you have Sadi, which we have, haven't studied in detail, but we have had. Ah, yesterday we did had. So hopefully. You all can still remember <laughs> because it's only yesterday. All right. And then the last letter of alphabet is Kuf. Okay. So notice that some of the spellings will be different here and there. Uh, don't worry about that. Okay. So three, uh, four letters, four alphabets made up Isaac's name, which in, in general means laughter. But we're going to look into the alphabets a bit and you'll see why. God called him, this promised child, this miracle child, laughter, all right, or Isaac. Okay. So this is very brief, okay? So from those who have been following the uh, teachings on the Hebrew alphabets, if you have not, do come in so that you can catch up and also receive the revelations of who our awesome mighty God is all right that our lives we don't live anymore as just normal human being or ordinary human being on this earth you a picture of a hand okay this is very very brief uh, that means to work a mighty hand or make sadi is a picture of fish hook so from the Hebrew letters you can learn from remember the picture the numerical value of gematria the numbers also from the shape and the meaning of a word, of the word of, of that letter. Chat, cat, hat. <laughs> Sorry, the pronunciation is a picture of an inner room, a fence or sanctuary. Kuf pictures the back of the head. It also means last and least. So this is not, uh, that's it. Okay, so we have much more meaning to it. Briefly. Okay, so based on this pictographic meaning, Isaac is translated as also a mighty deed done out of a desire to separate and provide sanctuary for the last and least. Meaning that God's hand, all right, you know the youth, a little bit of it, is resemble God's fiery hand. It resembles the supernatural realm of God, all right? God is supernatural, youth, uh, the little that holds a lot. We will go as you understand more. So Isaac, right, so this starts from, uh, it's a mighty deed, right? It's also uh, resemble Jesus, okay, coming as the son of God being sacrificed for us, all right? So that we can now live in the presence of God. We can live in him and he can live in, in us and we can know all. So it's a miracle, okay? It's the father of Jacob. They became a great nation. So Jacob today is known as his name Israel, a uh, prince or ruler. And now they are a great nation because of God's covenant with their forefathers. Okay. The youth is a little that holds a lot. All right. That means so small, right? It's the smallest letter in the Hebrew, all the 22 Hebrew alphabets. It's just like a point all right you put your point your pen one point and that is the you it's the beginning of everything that is supernatural or spiritual so let's see how this isaac's name all right relate to the whole nation of israel and today to the new creation in christ jesus so these people deuteronomy deuteronomy 7 verse 6 to 7 for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. It's wonderful today in our worship, we have 
we sang about the holiness of God, okay? And it's very in line with what uh, today's uh, teaching or sermon. For the Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. God chose Jacob and the descendants. All right, so God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And today we have what you call the Jews or the Israel nation. The Lord did not set his affection. So imagine if you existed that time, if you were born that time. If you're born a Jew, you are very privileged <laughs> because they were God's special selected people. It's like you go to school, right? And which team is selected, right? Oh, not school. The best is the today international competition, right? You have different representing different countries. And then you wait for the final selection. Which country will be the one in the finals or the best, the chosen ones? And this is what happened. With different, different nations in the world at that time. But God chose the Jews. God chose to make a covenant with Abraham. Remember when Abraham lived, there were other people also. All right? But he made that covenant with Abraham to call him out of his father's country, of his land, and make him great and famous. That's where his descendants became the special chosen ones of God. To be chosen is something very precious, special, right? When you are in school, <laughs> whatever you do, you want to be chosen by your teacher. Right. That means you are special. Okay? You are a treasure. Now, the Lord did not, see, God reminded the children of Israel at that time that God did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other people. It's a bit remind me of us, right? <laughs> but you were the fewest of all people, right? So that time, the children of Israel were only very few, okay? And even after Abraham, uh, after Isaac came and the descendants went down, crossing the uh, Red Sea, there were only about 2 million plus uh, Jews. And today, even how many years have passed, the Jewish nation is still small. What is the population? Oh, along, or just the, along the whole world. Okay, so around there, correct? Huh? <laughs> okay, but still very, very small. Okay, so that is after many years. But at that time, all right, when the covenant was given, when God was speaking to them, they were the fewest. So it is not nothing to do with their numbers, with their greatness, with how powerful they are, how good they are. It's just because God loved them. It was because the Lord loved you. The Lord loves you. That's what Moses was talking. The Lord loves you. Ah, you are chosen today not because you are smart. <laughs> we got degrees or we got talents. But because the Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. And as a covenant God, very, very important to understand covenant, that he kept the oath or covenant he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out with a mighty hand, that's the youth there, and redeem you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Today, Egypt represents, the world represents sin. All right, the dominion of sin after we born from, we came up from Adam. Okay, so how did God redeem us from his mighty hand, which starts from the youth of God? Now know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. So God, it, today we rest on his faithfulness. He called you, Christine, it's not because you are great or powerful or whatever. All right, each one of us. It's his faithfulness. Today is his faithfulness that we rest upon for the, our journey on this earth. Not about how faithful we are, but the more we see how great 
God is and how faithful it is, we, we will love him back. And that's where we serve him. Okay, so I won't talk too much about the youth. I went through a bit already, but maybe for those who haven't heard it, right? Remember, it's the fiery hand of God, only uh, supernatural, always resemble supernatural power or the spiritual realm. The next letter in uh, alphabet in Isaac's name is Sadi. We haven't come to it yet, but for today's uh, teaching or lesson, we will go and we'll understand a little bit of Sadi. All right. Sadi rejoices in righteousness and humility. Righteousness, cheerfulness, or Yahweh Sikinu. Okay. Righteousness. Sadi is like, represent the man of righteousness. Okay. The word, uh, okay, you can I put it here. Look about also humility. All right. Throughout all the letters, it's about God humbling himself, Jesus, to come down and we humbling ourselves. All right. To look up to God and learn from him. All right. So this is just a, a, a famous, a very famous author and a servant of God, C.S. Lewis. Right. He's had this statement humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less <laughs> okay so when we are full of ourselves we think of the all the time about me but you know oh everybody forgot about me and what am i doing here blah, blah, blah. it's always about me okay no matter how we think humble we are that is not humility humility is to think less or uh thinking of ourselves less okay less of yourself is thinking that i'm not worthy la, you know and that is not humility okay but let's go to righteousness okay because sadi represents mainly righteousness all right so for the word the letter sadi to start it is the beginning of the word righteous it's also you see the same letter yahweh sikinu yud he vav he that is Yahweh, that's our God, and then is our righteousness. So in Jeremiah 23, 6, in his days, that's the name given to God, uh, 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 one of God's names, shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. This is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. The occurrence of yud he vav he as the uh, Jehovah Sikinu, the Lord Jehovah, our righteousness. So it starts with the letter Zadi, okay, which is in the, the word laughter. Okay, so in the word laughter, which is Isaac's name, means laughter, you have youth, the hand of God, all right, the supernatural hand of God, power of God, all right, the move of God. And then you have the next letter Zadi which is righteousness of God, okay? Yeah, this morning we heard it a, a bit in the communion, all right? As uh, Rebecca was sharing about, we are the righteousness of God in Christ because of what Jesus did. Okay, let's see. Laughter, the word laughter in Hebrew has zadi there, which means righteousness, okay? So we know there are two types of righteousness, self-righteousness and God's righteousness so second corinthians 5 21 he who made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god in him so we don't want to be our own righteousness that means what i did right my own uh, good deeds and all that but we want to learn about and know that we have become his righteous right so christianity has got nothing to do with trying to be right by our own effort but only he god can make us right before him it is a spiritual thing all right our sin was put on jesus christ that's why you say jesus who knew no sin became sin who sin our sin and then in a divine exchange on the cross 
we received his righteousness or his right standing before God. Okay, so in order to understand God's righteousness, let's also have a look at why God have to come, Jesus have to come and give us his righteousness because we also have some kind of righteousness, right? <laughs> it's called self-righteousness. Righteousness. Every one of us have it. I'm right. <laughs> and have you ever said it before in your life? I'm right. Ah, you're wrong. I'm right. And we always fight for our right. <laughs> so what's that? Our own self-righteousness. We always feel that we are right. That's why we have a lot of fights, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, quarrels in this life because everyone insists that they are right. So we were born with that. It's called self-righteousness. But God have a different righteousness. So this righteousness, self-righteousness to God by our own effort doing is in the eyes of God what it says. We are all as unclean things and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind. So reminded again, Romans uh, 3, 3, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So have taken us away. Now, so when you see this word filthy rags, normally we just think of a dirty rag, right? A cloth in your house that you use that is dirty already. You can either put in the washing machine or use some... What is the thing? Detergent? <laughs> Clorox, right? To just remove it and then still can be used. But this is not what in the Hebrew it means. Okay? It doesn't mean just that rag that you, you know, dirty and then you either throw away or can still clean. In the Hebrew, this word filthy, all right? It's a cloth. It is filthy. Now, I've said it before, but today you can look at it for yourself so you don't have to doubt. <laughs> Whether you know pastor say correct or not, it's inside there. Filthy, all right. It means a menstruation, filthy rag, a stained garment. All right. Of course, it speaks of even the best deeds of guilty or sinful people. It's the a period, the menstrual flux, soiling and filthy. Okay, everyone knows what's a menstruation <laughs> right even men today all know already very smart <laughs> okay so but for ladies you will know it even more okay because it's that blood that the body pushes out of the body because it's already dirty and have no use at all so that even the body reject it it's smelly it's dirty okay and it has no use normally our blood gives life right but this is the part, the blood that is dirty and cannot give life or benefit to us anymore. And that's why it is taken out. And then when it comes out, we have this menstruation cloth, all right, to hold it and then throw away. Anybody ever tr go and wash your menstruation pad? It's too dirty. Cannot clean already. You cannot recycle. <laughs> it's one of the dirtiest things that you cannot recycle or make it clean it speaks about our sin you know that is so dirty that it requires our lord jesus who is sinless to come and clean us up okay the blood only the clean blood of jesus now flow inside us so this our self-righteousness actually the uh, just now you read that verse it didn't say our sin it's like this filthy rag. It is our self righteousness. So, which one like more serious like that? Yeah, <laughs> self righteousness, right? We would think, oh, the sin is more serious. Okay, the sin of people is more serious, right? They kill la, they hate la, and all that. But God said in His word, a self righteousness is worse. Cannot even clean. That's why Jesus come. He can save the sinners, but he cannot do, cannot save the 
yeah, the self-righteous people. <laughs> Can you see how serious it is? Why? Because the self-righteous, the sinners, realize they got this sin and they want, they need help from God because they know they cannot make themselves clean. They cannot uh, overcome their temptations or everything bad in them. But the self-righteous people are those who say, <laughs> I don't need God. <laughs> I don't need God. And sometimes Christians can still have self-righteousness, right? Where we decide to do things our way. I don't need God's word. I don't need God's wisdom. I already learned a lot in this life. I know. Let me tell you how to live <laughs> and then no need to go to bible no need to go to god okay because we have achieved certain things I even remember the humility the two parts of a uh, sadi which is righteousness and humility all right we still need that humility to say lord i don't know everything yet and i still need to learn still need to grow and i even you, have, you may do a lot of things according to bible doesn't mean we are already got everything, right? We still continue to humble ourselves and see, receive this, His righteousness. How very important this righteousness is. Remember, God's righteousness is in the word laughter. Okay, and Isaac is also a type of Jesus Christ who is a gift to us. We cannot attain righteousness by our good deeds by our own self that only amounts to self-righteousness so let's look in philippians where paul apostle paul talks about this type of two types of righteousness his own which is self-righteousness and god's righteousness now he is a believer just like us I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. That's Apostle Paul, who wrote three quarters of the New Testament in the Bible that we are reading today. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. So many people, whether Christian or non-Christian, right, we feel that by following all the commandments, we are very righteous, <laughs> right? And for especially for the Jews or for, for the uh, Hebrews, the, the people, the believers that time first started with the Jews, then the, the gospel went to the non-Jews, that's the Gentiles, okay? Those who are not a Jew is a Gentile. So the, then you have this group of people called Pharisees, of which Paul is one of them. That means they are the religious teachers, they are the scholars who know the, the word of God or the Torah, everything very, very well, the commandments. And they follow, supposedly follow the commandments. Okay. So Paul was one of them. All right. Apostle Paul. And he said, I, and I persecute, he persecuted the church. The church. It didn't burn down the building. <laughs> it's not a building. All right. But today, of course, there are some persecution that is done that way as well. Uh, that's why we don't have buildings. Huh? <laughs> the devil cannot burn any building down. Okay, because unless they burn you at the stake, <laughs> Elijah will be the first. <laughs> because you go and preach the gospel. Oh, but there is a great reward for that. Okay. So we as for righteousness, he obeyed the law without fault. That means on the Ten Commandments and all the commandments, he was one of the Pharisees who can obey all one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not use the name Lord. All he do perfectly. He said he was blameless without fault. I once thought these things were valuable. So he thought that life with God or Judaism at that time was just about obeying the commandments of God. And that is the most important thing. So in that thought of his, he went and persecuted the Christians because he thought they have gone astray by receiving Jesus. All right? 
because they believe in Jehovah, yud he vav he but they, the Jews didn't accept Jesus as the Messiah. So in his, I would say, in his innocence, right, he thought that the Jews, the, the, the Gentiles, or the Jews who have turned to Christ, have betrayed God. So that's why he persecuted them. Okay? So he said that, I am without fault. So many people today, even uh, especially older people. <laughs> okay, but that could be, hopefully that will be our past, right? We will say, I eat more rice than you eat. Oh, more salt than you eat rice. So we have our parents and even sometimes ourselves, grandparents, grand oh, they will scold you like that, you know? I know more than you. Okay, I tell you this is right, this is wrong. Okay, wow. <laughs> okay, so this is a lot to do with self-righteousness, okay, which is, I do better. I know better. All right? And the law, even they are not Christian, they also take the, steal the Ten Commandments to discipline their children. <laughs> uh, Hannah, one of them. <laughs> In the past. Okay? Okay, so now no more. Praise the Lord. Saved by grace. So what happened is, right, we take the commandments, we love commandments because we think that that one will help to control our children and so forth. In the school, also you have, you need, it's, it's nothing wrong, but it is like very hard, very lawful. Okay. When we understand grace, it is a little, you will see that these commandments in the Old Testament and all that, beginning we thought it's very, very hard and we resist or scared of it. But I'll show you today that it is not because the commandments are hard. It's because our hearts are hard. I'll show you as we go along, right? But to, we are no longer, uh, we are not lawless in Christ. But how to be, when we are lawful, it means we take the commandments and we impose on others. That's where we become lawful. Okay, first we, we can even impose on ourselves and then make ourselves miserable because you can't follow all. And at the same time, the worst thing we do is we put it on others. Thou shalt not. Actually, your children can tell you, you also do. Uh. <laughs> Correct or not? Ah, I see Rachel laugh already. So the problem, there's something wrong with this, right? This way of uh, using the commandments. Because when you tell your children, thou shalt not lie. And then the child will say, I caught you lying also ma, that day. <laughs> See? <laughs> ah, okay. So actually, this is the lawful part. We, we take the commandments and we put it onto others. All right? And actually, God, Jesus said, we also cannot do it our own self. All right? So don't do that. When you understand grace, First, we are set free from obeying the law like that. Okay, actually, inside us, when we try to obey the law, we are trying to be good. We know that we are bad. And inside every person is a need to be good. But the thing is, when we are born in sin, there's nothing can make us good. We cannot become good. So religion is trying to be good. So the, every parent, child, born, will try, to, uh, a parent will teach the child to be good in this world because they know they are bad inside, deep down. All right? So this is not, still doesn't come to the standard of God to, in order for us to be accepted by Him because all have sinned. So in order to make us accepted by God is to change our whole nature right to make us good by faith by jesus dying taking the punishment for sin for the bible says for the wages of sin is death so no matter how you try to be good to be righteous to do the right thing by your own self cannot the mark is still fail <laughs> okay still cannot pass right god's screening god's uh, perfection cannot so the only way is to make us perfect, make us good from inside. And that is where you have to be born again. So like Christine, she received Jesus. Now inside your spirit, you have been made good. 
you have been made righteous. So as believers, children of God, we don't have to try to be good anymore. Ah, that trying is very stressful. All right, that's why we keep on because we feel guilty. Uh, we take it out on the children. <laughs> okay, so actually, it all stem from feeling guilt. Okay, so how God has to settle this whole issue for us? Remove that guilty conscience. Remove that condemnation. Remove that sin in our life. That sinful uh, feeling of guilt and condemnation, and put the right standing inside our spirit so that we don't have to feel guilty anymore not because of what we did or didn't do because where does your guilty feeling come from especially very strong when you did something wrong <laughs> or you didn't do something that you're supposed to do then you feel very guilty right ah you answer back your parents or you know you didn't do your chores you're supposed to do huh steal money ah so you feel guilty right when we do all these things we feel guilty so if that defines whether we are right or wrong then we are still in our sin okay and we cannot come out from it so god in his love have to send jesus that's why isaac was born as a gift okay and we see how abraham got his righteousness Okay, that give birth to the miracle of laughter or Isaac. So Jesus came and turned around everything. He says, you can never, if you, if you have 80 years of life, all your 80 years, you can try to be good. You can go do charity, all right, and uh, help people and so forth. And you go and hide inside your room, close all the doors, bang, the guilty conscience is still there. <laughs> okay, it will not. Ah, there's a confession <laughs> from, uh, okay, but it's passed already, okay? Jesus don't remember, God don't remember because the blood of Jesus already washed away that sin or that wrongdoing, okay? So today, if we were to come before God and bombarded with all the things that we did wrong or didn't do right, we can never stand before God. And because God loves us so much, He wants us to stand that's the righteousness the right standing jesus before god don't have all this bombardment <laughs> in the head right because he was without sin okay but for us we were born in sin and the result of sin is that guilty conscience all right that haunt us so god removed it graciously by his love there's no way you can remove it except by believing jesus so paul says I thought that this was the most important thing in life. Must be good, must do good, must obey. That's what he thought. And then, but now, when he come to know Jesus Christ, he said, I consider this worthless because of what Christ has done. Now, it's not, again, where after knowing Christ, you just disobey all the commandments. It's different, okay? I'll show you it's different. Because a person who has been made new, will not want to sin okay you are a new person with a new nature of god you actually don't want to disobey but it is from your heart now it is not because your mother father grandmother tell you not to do because of what christ does he sees something that is more valuable Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. So there is a righteousness from obeying the law all right that means the commandments you shall do this thou shalt do this or thou shalt not do this this is your self-righteousness because you all feel we all feel good right when we when we obey the law <laughs> yeah you feel very good teacher i've obeyed already <laughs> i've done already mommy now you can give you know so if we have been growing up like that okay when we are obedient we feel good when we disobey, we don't feel good. Now, 
God's righteousness is going to surpass this. So it's not about you doing anything, then good, then you feel good. No, oh, it is about Him giving you that. It's not about feeling anymore. All right, it's about standing. Do you have a standing before God? That means when you stand before God, as He search your whole life, supposedly, oh, there is no sin there. Any one of us in that shoe? where God put the laser beam and check scene one. <laughs> you all go doctor, they check a lot of things, right? Let's say there is a, something that, you know, in heaven they put there and check all your sin. Will anyone, let's say without Christ, will everyone be 100% clean? Oh, there will be some point in your life, even though you are just 20 years old, 16 years old, maybe also God read it a little bit, huh? Oh, 18. <laughs> I made you younger because you look so young, eh, Rachel. So, none of us will pass the test. Okay? Put a laser beam. Everyone have got some black dog somewhere in your life. That's why Jesus told the Pharisee, right? The one who have no sin cast the first stone. And they, from the eldest to the youngest, have to move away. So, this is impossible for every human being to be to stand perfectly right before God apart so that's the only way when we understand that we appreciate what it means by Jesus making us right you can stand before God now and he doesn't look and point at this area of your life you didn't obey because 2nd Corinthians 5 17 says <laughs> all things have become new the old and what was the old all the old condemnation the old things that you did that nobody knew that just now Rachel confessed <laughs> okay it's all passed away all right don't remember them anymore because it can you can use it as a example of teaching or sharing but ah so after that you're born again you're a new person when God look at you then Rachel say, God, you know that day I steal my mother's money. Then what will God say? I don't remember God such thing happened, man. <laughs> uh, but God don't want you to remember because He don't remember, He don't want you to remember. He wants you to fill your memory with all the wonderful new things. Yes, with God's word. Okay? So we don't we not to remind God of our sin anymore because He don't even remind us of our sin. And that is something. This world cannot accept because the world is still based on do good, do bad, do good, get good, do bad, get bad. God said, I come with a different thing altogether. I come with grace, which is undeserved. It's not do good, get good. Huh? Yeah. So hard to accept because man is so self-righteous until they sin bad. <laughs> if they have sinned very bad, then they cannot hold on to this anymore. Okay, but that's why God can save sinners, but very hard to save the self-righteous ones because they still believe in themselves. Right? So God save us and tell us there's no way, no way that you can have a clean sheet of paper in your life. My laser beam go through. And everyone has got some dot. But because of Jesus Christ, all right, you now can have clean, totally new, clean paper. Of your life you go through the screening in heaven whoop didn't sin and if you are still in righteousness you will say huh actually i got through a lot of things then the angel say no lah you have the blood of jesus cover wash already wow you will say wow <laughs> god is that good ah you know i thought it was just theory only it is real all right that's why it is in the laughter okay have you seen anyone who do wrong and then guilty conscience and then come before the parent. <laughs> They're very scared, right? <laughs> you do wrong already, you try to hide, just like Adam did. And then in front of the, the judge, you will hide. You will be scared. You cannot laugh. Now you see how powerful is this laughter, right? Because in it, 
It's the righteousness of God. One of those letters inside. You are made righteous by Jesus, not by your own doing. So Paul says, for his sake, I discarded everything else. Paul is the author and the one who received the most revelation of righteousness in the new creation. Because we learn all this righteousness and grace from Paul's writings. For his sake, I discarded everything as garbage. I mean, everything is everything that I've achieved. Everything that I think I thought was valuable. Obeying the law, all right? And it becomes now garbage. God has to strip us of all those things that we boast about. You know, I'm so good, you know, I got help. You know, I obey my parents when I was young. Why are you so stubborn, you know, obey me one? Ah, so we are proud of our good works, our ability to obey or do something. But they never tell you there are some things they also disobey. <laughs> the one they hide a bit, okay? So we boast only about the things that we do well and good. And that Paul realized and said, I think I'm good, bad, everything, especially good, right? The achievements, it is like garbage, cow dung, in addition. Dog dung or dung. So that I can gain Christ. Okay? So in order to have a knowledge of Christ and the grace flowing in our lives, remember righteousness is self-righteousness is always putting the law on other people. Sometimes you don't even realize it. <laughs> yeah, but the more conscious we are of God's grace or spirit, this we will discard that self righteousness slowly disappear from our lives. All right, because of the mind in the heart, no more. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. This is really very, very uh, dominant in our lives, right? When we obey, we feel good. When we disobey, we go hide. <laughs> then you see some people never go to church. <laughs> so called go to church. Why? Oh, because they feel guilty. We don't have to have that anymore. Okay? But the realization of God's goodness and grace will cause us to come humbly before Him. It's no more comparing, I'm better than you because I always obey the commandments. There's no more comparison. All right? Each one has to humble ourselves before God because it is. If not for him giving us his righteousness, we all go to hell. <laughs> okay? Our self-righteousness is like nothing. So, it no longer depends on myself obeying the law, but rather I become righteous through faith in Christ. By believing Christ is my righteousness, Christ died for me. So, I believe him, I acknowledge him as my righteousness. Okay? His word. He said, I am righteous. I believe that. I receive that by faith. I no longer look at my doings and let him change me, change my nature. So once it may like to steal, when you acknowledge God as your righteousness, you will find you don't have the desire to steal anymore. You don't have the desire to lie or you can't even do it because there is a new seed of righteousness growing in us. I became righteous through faith in Christ for God's way of making us right with Him depends on faith. All right? This is God's way where we just believe in Him and do what He says if there is something to do. Believing in Him is harder for a lot of people because I say, I'd rather just do. <laughs> right? My way. But believing in Him, His way seems out of line with whatever we have been used to. Okay? But that this is what God's word say. All right? That's why we need to humble ourselves and come before God and say, Lord, I surrender to your ways. And yesterday I was saying, how do we know God's ways? Yeah, if we only buy from his word. If we don't read his word, we don't do meditate, we don't confess, we don't hear his word. How on earth are we going to know what's God's mind on a certain area of life? Which is God's way. I want to know Christ, Philippians 3.10, and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him. Oh, this part. 
Normally, we don't confess that part, is it? <laughs> the second part. <laughs> because Paul, Philippians 3.10, all right, is that I may know him in the New King James Version and the power of his resurrection, that means to experience his mighty power that raised him from the dead, and the fellowship of his suffering. That means what Christ went through, I want to also go through. Ah, uh, now everyone quiet ready. No more amen. <laughs> that is the persecution part. Okay? But Jesus said, if they persecute me, they will persecute you also. So do you want to still follow me? If you follow him, then you're willing to be persecuted. So remember, persecution is not out of your own foolishness. Okay, we go and catch out the dog and then the dog bite you and then you say, oh, that's persecution. Who asks you to catch out the dog? <laughs> the sleeping dog. All right. So there is wisdom. All right. And also, but when you, especially when you start witnessing, all right, start preaching the gospel, start serving the Lord, taking care of God's children and, and uh, preaching the gospel outside. Why preaching the gospel has the most persecution? <laughs> no, why why other things? You go to church every day, no persecution one. Tea and coffee and cakes. <laughs> huh? Yeah, what? What? S what? Oh taking. Okay, okay. So yeah, because this one belongs to the devil, right? Imagine you go and take other people's children. They, they will come after you or not? Okay, but today we are protected also, right? But there will be some form of resistance, okay? Because it's always the two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And the devil's kingdom, where all the souls not yet safe. They, Jesus came and said, you are of your father, the devil. So it's like two families there. Okay, but the, our family is a good father. The other one is a bad father. Okay, but these are all his children. So we are going to snatch a horrible person's children. Will he not come after you? He also came after Jesus, nailed him on the cross, and all his disciples. Okay, for preaching the gospel is the most highest activity, all right, in the spiritual kingdom. Where and the most active, the most violent, where you are, like it's a it's a soldiers going to the enemy camp and rescue people out of the enemy camp. You all got see movie one or not? <laughs> or all never see show one, only I see. <laughs> God, right? So you see all those uh, rescue missions. Okay, all right. They have to go into the enemy camp, dangerous or not? Ah, and then if you get caught, all right? You get tortured and all that. Okay, so of course here uh, we will be protected, but at the same time, sometimes God allow us to go through all the persecution and the suffering, also to grow our life. All right, so it's not just Christ, uh, you know being a Christian or disciple. It's not just it is saving souls, but it's also our life. One very important ingredient in a Christian's life is integrity. Okay, so you learn a lot of things. Discipline is important, but in integrity is the most important, the character. How can we believe a God? You think God is, has integrity? He has. He's a just God. If he does justice and integrity, we won't follow him. All right, that's why God has to punish Jesus. If God has no integrity, he will just say, no need, lah. just let man go. Let sin slide. But he punished Jesus not because Jesus sinned. Because of who sinned? Yeah. Ah. That is beyond the call fair or not fair. <laughs> right? God has to be fair to his son, fair to the devil, so that we now right, can walk in that freedom. So remember, saving souls is going into devil's territory and rescue people. Okay? from death if you think your job is the most uh, meaningful in life you still are not saving people yeah 
Even doctors, they are wonderful. They can still only save your physical life up to a certain limit. But you, when you preach the gospel, or you yourself being saved, is an eternal life. So the witnessing and saving souls, important or not? The most. Yeah? You are saving people's lives for eternity. So the promise is received by faith. Okay, Romans 4. I'm talking about Abraham again. That's coming back to Isaac and Abraham. Promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift so that, and we are all certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses, if we have faith like Abraham. For Abraham is the father of all who believe. That is what the scripture means when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in God who brings the dead back to life and creates new things out of nothing. Okay, this will keep on and on through our study of Hebrew letters because from all the letters and many more to come and many more Hebrew words to understand, it's all about God who creates things out of nothing. If God do it this way, if we are in Christ as he is, so are we. That means this power is given to the new creation. This is very powerful. They say, oh, God can do. Lah. Then he says, you are a new creation. I put my power inside you. That's why yesterday I talked very strongly on the one thing that a lot of people don't want to do. <laughs> Speak. <laughs> open mouth, whether it's witnessing, whether it's meditating, confession, all the one to open mouth one, got go inside. <laughs> Mother say one. Okay. Right? How about a deception of the devil? You can this time say he's smart devil. Right? If he can keep every Christian's mouth shut, don't want to talk one, don't want to read, uh, read a loud Bible also, don't want. I want to speak God's word one. Let the pastor speak. Lah. He speak for us. <laughs> what happened? They are powerless. The very weapon that God gives us that's the most powerful is the tongue. With his words, not our words. So man speak all our own thing. And therefore, we got nothing. <laughs> he didn't create anything. <laughs> all right? But when we speak God's word, when you go out and speak God's word over all your life, your family, your children, that's why the Jews practice this, speaking blessing over their children every day. Okay? Why? Why uh, one time can already? La? <laughs> you will say, ah, one time can already. La. I already say it today. One time eat can or not? <laughs> again and again. Hope that revelation comes in. One time eat can or not? The rest you just observe the food. You don't eat at all. Because you say, well, I'm lazy to eat, lazy to chew. Ah, Rachel not here with it. She was saying, I'm not lazy. <laughs> okay. So the word of God is so powerful. Again, this instruction of God meditate on my word day and night keep hearing keep speaking okay meditate speak first into your spirit when you have a problem already you I don't know where to go on one sermon on you know it's, like, it's a bit too late yeah, but the grace of God so every day you want to live by the, the little grace there <laughs> no then you cannot really go to devil's territory and take the people because you are living like thin line like that holding on to the line. But actually, you can be a soldier to go out, provided you know you have weapon. Which policeman, which soldier doesn't have his weapon? So in, for us to grow up, right? Uh, if you are still new, then you just feed first with the Bible, with the word. But if you are older already, <laughs> okay, then... You are, should be enlisted in God's army to be prepared to go and save souls and take care of others already. Okay? Instead of still drinking milk. Right? But for those who are drinking, keep you are very young. Okay? So for uh, people like Christine, then she drink first. And then who is supposed to feed her with the milk? 
<laughs> oh, Elijah laughed at you. You can tell him. He also. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The one who bring you supposed to feed you milk. Okay. Feed until she grow up. All right. Not, not many, many years. Very fast. All right. Then she can also serve the Lord and go out and save souls. All right. So sometimes the fire of God is inside. Even they just drink one word. I'm a new creation in Christ. By his, they hear the preacher say, they can already go and tell someone. They may not, like for you, Christine, may not be able to share the whole gospel, but you can say, come, Jesus is real. Come and le le learn of Jesus. That also can, right? Invite. Just invite only people. And then you have the pastor or the leaders to teach, or you can bring to uh, your sister or whoever to share the gospel, those who already know. Okay? So, saving souls, sharing the gospel is a privilege and honor all right, that God gives to us and even to young ones who are willing to do it. In the Bible, you have many cases of that, right? Andrew, is it Andrew? Brought Peter. Yeah? And uh, someone else brought uh, Nathaniel, right? So, and if you go to mission field, you will see this happen all the time. You just want so say they don't know much yet, but they will already go and save souls. And the only problem is the people in the church. <laughs> save for many, many years already and then never move anywhere. Okay? So that's where the fire will come. <laughs> okay, and move us. So this is something very powerful. And through the whole all the Hebrew alphabets, I hope will stir you up to use what God has given us. Romans 4, 18. Even when there was no reason of hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations, for God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead, so was Sarah's womb. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and this, he brought glory to God. He was convinced fully that God is able to do what he ever he promises. This is Abraham's life, right? He believed that God is able to do what he promised. Okay, don't fall into that thing that we used to say, yes, amen, hallelujah, I believe, and never do anything. That is, if you never do anything, about certain things of God's promises that need something to be done, we still haven't believed God yet. Okay? Faith without action is? Yeah. So, why God requires certain things, all right? Action is because that is a test of faith. Do we believe in God or do we believe in our self? All right? And one very good example is our tithing and offering. Very, very clear. You believe in me, we tithe. We give because that means that we believe that God is able to do what He promised. Because He promised what? When you give, when you tithe, you open the windows of heaven and bless us even much more. So there's a promise behind that act. So we say, I believe God can do everything. And then we don't do it. <laughs> then we are actually not believing, right? Yeah, so even children. Why? You believe your daddy will daddy say, okay, today you clean the house. I'm going to take you go shopping or mommy. <laughs> no, you believe the promise, right? I will take you go shopping. Maybe yours is not clean the house. Yours is walk one round. <laughs> oh, straight away. <laughs> Why your mommy so good? Didn't ask you to do anything or so. Okay, so whatever it is, right? When there's a promise and there's a, some act to do, right? When we believe God, we do. Because we believe that God is able to do whatever He promised. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. So how did Abraham get his righteousness at the time? How? By? Faith is what? Just now you said earlier, the other word. Believing, yes, he believed what God promised, right? And by believing God, God count him righteous. That means he is already credited with righteousness for us because that time Jesus not yet died, all right? So they are credited in for the future brought to them, 
right? God is past time and this one. So what Jesus did on the cross also availed to Abraham because in order for all the blessings to come to Abraham before the blessings can come, he has to be made righteous before God because only the children of God, the righteous ones, can inherit. So God promised him an inheritance. So if he don't belong to God, he cannot inherit, right? Servants cannot inherit your what you have, only your sons. So God give it promises to Abraham, and in order for Abraham to inherit that promise or to of being, you know, being uh, blessed and be a blessing to the world, to inherit this earth, he has to be made righteous. And the only way he can be made righteous is not because of his doing, because if you talk about sin and all that, he also got tell lies and all that. He was not perfect. But he believed God's promise. Why God say he believed. All right? And that is enough to make him accepted before God and for the blessings to flow to his life. So it's the righteous people who will receive the blessings of God if we take it, all right? So everyone who is made righteous receive the blessing first by faith, believing, okay? So it was recorded for our benefit too. So not only just for about uh, um, Abraham, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was handed over to die because of our sins. He was raised to life to make us, in simple understanding, right with God. So all Christine had to do was just to believe that Jesus died for you. He cleansed your sin, forgave your sin, and he made, gave you, he made you right with God. Instead of that so big righteousness, he just made you right with God. Understand? Right with God, that means you don't see your sin anymore. You are now right. Right, a right person is very powerful. It's very confident, right? And there to claim your inheritance, there to take your blessing. Because we don't know enough that we are the righteousness of God. A lot of believers dare not act upon God's word, dare not take the inheritance and are still living as paupers on this earth, not pauper in, not paupers as no money, or, but maybe in lack, maybe in fear, right? Maybe all the time still worried, right? That is not, the, the standing of a righteous person, definitely worry is not inside. <laughs> Why? The right person, you, when you are right with your uh, father who is the richest man on this earth, are you worried? about your tomorrows yeah because you are right but you're wrong then you've worried because you cut your allowance <laughs> correct so in that right standing that god gave us by faith you dare to come before god humbly okay not proud because i made you right not because you are so good i made you right because of my grace i love you remember how you chose the children of israel I didn't choose you because you are mighty, you are big or clever or smart. Actually, God is the one who made them smart. And, but because you are few, right? and the glory of God will be seen, the power of God will be seen through them. So, uh, before this, uh, there is another letter there. Okay, that I didn't put it here. Uh, you have Sadi, and anyone can still remember the... Uh, Got head, all right. So head is what. Yesterday only teach. <laughs> Forgotten already. Life. What life? What type of life? More. That means it's a supernatural life, the transcending life, the one that is beyond the. Ordinary, the extraordinary, the supernatural life that now we have the doorway, all right, into this new realm, this new dimension, okay, which is transcending above the ordinary. This is hey, 
okay, the new beginning, so that you can have a new beginning. Today we have a new beginning in our sound system, the whole process of worshipping and ministering the word of God to, uh, to, through uh, YouTube and whatever. Clearer now, better, all right, and in the physical meeting, all can hear. I was in the toilet, so I can hear uh, Abigail doing the announcement. So beautiful, right? The sound system, projector, speaker, everything, right? It's a new beginning for us, another stage, stage of our life. So church is a new beginning after being made righteous, okay? So from youth, it's the hand of God, laughter. It's in laughter, okay? The hand of God over as a gift to Isaac, so we learn the Sadi. Sadi made us righteous. So it is his righteousness. Okay, that gift, Jesus is the righteousness of God. And we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Okay, so you have been made righteous, right standing. And then this is a new beginning into the spiritual realm. No more live as an ordinary person. Every day worried about tomorrow, worried about your pay, worried about this, worried about that. Because it's a new dimension, you are, you are now a child of God. You have God taking care of you. That is why the letter hit is inside the word Isaac or laughter. Okay? That means everything is new now. You like Chinese New Year? <laughs> new, you laugh, right? Chinese New Year? Very happy, right? I can eat steamboat. Okay, that's Rachel. Okay? So, it's everything new. You got new clothes. Ah, she will always tell us, my mommy, buy for me new dress already. Anything that is new we like, right? We don't like too old already. <laughs> too old, we either throw away. Okay? Cannot be used anymore. But this new life, okay? I'm a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. That is the letter. Shit. So what is new? Everything is still the same. If we still see new as living on this earth, governed by this system of this earth and the belief system of this earth, we are still living in the old. Right? Because the new is about the heavenly realm, the kingdom of God. Jesus came to say, I show you, I come to reveal the kingdom of God. Two kingdoms. This is the new life that you entered into, where virus cannot touch you. Sickness cannot come near you. Where poverty cannot come near you. Fear cannot come near you. You can rebuke right, through the ways of God. Communion, faith, right, learning God's word. But you're no longer timid because God has not given us a spirit of timidity but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I don't be naughty. <laughs> Rachel. Okay? So, right? so that is for every one of us. All right? So God has already made us all righteous so that now only the righteous, only God can enter into His palace, right? Yeah, and His kingdom has, is different from here. So the no entry sign removed already. Now it's like, come in. Jesus said, come, come and sup with me. You're supping with who? You're fellowshipping with who? Not just another human being, right? With Jesus who is? who transcends time and space, who is a God, the Almighty, the one who created. When we come to realize that, only the Spirit can understand. Okay? So it's, you're talking to who? In your quiet time, in your own time, reading the Bible, all that. God who is here, He's the one who provided all our needs. Without, there was no raising fund, right? <laughs> I don't believe in raising fund, right? But I believe in God providing when there's a need. I just tell him, we need this. I don't even understand everything, but God about a sound system. I just, you know, look at all the things. Why we all squeaking one, <laughs> the sound. And then, you know, cannot hear, cannot this. So I just say in my heart, you know, God, we need. And then God provide even the, for missions. In the first mission that uh, uh, Elijah went, right? God said, you don't look at how much we have. <laughs> okay? And then true enough, by the time it came to go, I just follow. And then the money is there. This is God. I believe in supernatural God. All right? Who is leading us, who is with us all. If there's finances that's needed, or so I tithe. We, we, you know, we have nothing to boast in that. But we're just following God's ways. And then the rest, He do. Whenever the need comes, He will raise up someone to give, whether in our midst or outside. 
All right, whoever. So this is our God. This is the new life, huh? Yes, right? God provides, all right? Wherever he leads, <clears throat> he provides. No need to go building fun <laughs> or any kind of fun <laughs> because God is the one who is building this ministry, okay? That's why I'm so thankful to God and how, how wonderful he is. Okay, so the, there's one more letter. <clears throat> Forgot again. So after the letter head, which is the new beginning, there's the letter Ku. <laughs> okay, Ku. All right, some K-U-F, some is spelled Q-U-O-F. Okay, I shared a little bit of Ku in one of the other Sunday sermon. Anyone can still remember what is Ku? Give back to the teacher already. <laughs> hmm? Kadosh, holiness, okay? Basic meaning or the main meaning, there are others, okay? Is holiness, okay? God's holiness. So when we are made righteous by faith, then you enter into the new realm, the house of God, the family of God. It's supernatural, okay? But we are human beings, but supernatural God inside you, all right? As you learn, you will realize you can do a lot of things that are not natural. And then the product of righteousness is holiness. Holiness. How many of you on this earth try to be holy by themselves? You know, be holy. Okay. But remember the day I shared about uh, ku, all right? Holiness, kadosh. God has inherent holiness, but we are made holy. So we are not God, but we are made holy because of. Jesus. He made us right and he made us holy. Okay, that's why in Christ, 1 Corinthians 1.30 says that we have been made righteousness, uh, wisdom, righteousness, holiness, redemption, sanctification, set apart. So all this is made for us. Christ made it, made us holy. So that means in the word laughter or Isaac, you have yud, sadi, sadi is what? The righteous man. Righteousness, made righteous by God. Then you have head, head, which is the new life. Now, supernatural one. Okay? If you don't understand, if you don't catch it that it's supernatural, it will just be new life. And then we forget about it. Eh? <laughs> because every year we have new year. Not really very excited, right? <laughs> but new life is a new dimension of life. The new quality of life, totally different, spiritual, supernatural. That is the what God means by new life, which we have never entered into before. If before you're born again, you never entered into this new life. Yeah. So if people say, "Oh, you married already, we got new life." <laughs> Actually, sometimes got more headache, right? <laughs> right. But this is not. We are married to Jesus. It's a new life in a new dimension altogether. We never experienced before until you get born again. You are now like, eh, now how come I can hear God? How come I can feel, you know, how come I'm different already? Right? It's a spiritual realm. And then, cool, holiness. So in that word that you're made holy, you got God's hand, all right, the youth, the power, then sadi, righteousness, we are made righteous. New life, spiritual, supernatural, beginning of this new life, and whereby we are made holy. The mission, when I was talking about uh, Kuf the other day, remember, the mission of the church or the Christian is to go into the world and <laughs> about holiness. Bring holiness, God's holiness to the world. Because the world only live in their own holiness. Try to be holy. Try to be righteous. So, yes, the gospel includes what? The righteousness of God. Romans 1, 16, 17. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For in the gospel, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believe. For why? Why is it so powerful can save people? Because the, 
Yes, the righteousness of God is revealed in the good news. In the good news, we don't talk about our righteousness. When we tell someone to receive Jesus, it's not about, okay, now you do good, you will, you know, enter heaven. We are talking about the righteousness of God. You believe Jesus and that you are made right. That's why it's so powerful. So in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. For those who believe God, the, the just shall live by faith. The just, the holy ones, the righteous ones. So you have become righteous, you have become holy. And we now we go break, go into the world. Remember, not go into the church. <laughs> go into the world now. The church, you are the church. Rebecca, so powerful. Go into the world and bring that righteousness of God in the life to the people outside who have no idea because the people still live by karma, right? <laughs> yeah, do right, get right. You know, still live in their own righteousness and they can never be saved. But we have the good news, which is the righteousness of God, whereby He is the one who can make a person righteous. And from that day, they belong to God, they enter a new life. And the result of it is actually laughter, right? <laughs> joy live a cheerful life so why when you are in the world because why do people feel guilty all right they are always grumpy they're always worried that's why they got no joy they got no laughter and you go inside the world and you can laugh not laugh at them <laughs> okay laugh because you have the yeah of god and then they ask you why are you laughing in the midst of all the problem because I have God's righteousness. God made me right by faith, not by my own doing. I fail a lot. I make a lot of mistakes. But the righteous, he still, I still stand right before him because I believe Jesus made me right. Very simple. When you understand this, right, you bring forth the gospel, the real gospel, the true gospel, that only Christ can make us right before God. And when you are right, you can laugh at problems, you can laugh at challenges, you can laugh at anything that the devil throw back at you. So live a cheerful life. Cheerful life. That's why even when we give, God say what? Give cheerfully. God is laughing, all right? There and full of joy because it is finished. The work that Jesus needs to do for us to come into this state of righteousness is already done. It's just the people to enter in. To the, through the gate, to the doorway, to live in this new life. Live a cheerful life without complaining or division among yourselves. For then you will see, be seen as innocent, faultless and pure children of God, even though you live in the midst of brutal and perverse culture. There's one significant thing about Christians. They can laugh, they can smile, they have the joy in the midst of problems. Whatever is happening, they have God. Okay, that's why they have the head. They are having a new life. And that's what, where, we, where do you have the light that shines? In darkness. That's why we go into the world. The, the church very bright already. <laughs> okay, everyone is uh, light. Okay, but where this light need to shine? In the dark places, out there, right? In the walking, uh, where we do our exercise, right? In the hospitals, anywhere, in your offices, there's darkness there. In the spiritual realm, that's why head has caused your spiritual eyes to open, to see that there's a spiritual realm and there is an earthly realm. Because if you don't see that, you're still thinking this whole world is about your chair, your table, your office, your house. Right? But there is a spiritual realm. And Jesus, through receiving Jesus by faith, you enter the doorway of your eyes opening, your ears can open, and you realize, huh, you know, if you walk, people walk by, you say, this one needs Jesus. Is that the first thought that comes to you? Because you are now aware of the spiritual realm that this person is walking. Sometimes movies also show like that, right? Uh, they open to the ghosts, right? They can see. So can you see the spiritual realm that people walking past you will no longer be like last time, you just don't see anything. <laughs> but now you have become aware that there is a person that is walking and without Jesus, they are heading in this journey of life to hell or living like a living dead. So it is about light. See, you are appear among them as shining lights in the universe, holding out the words of 
eternal life. So every one of you got words of eternal life. Even Christine got a few words already. So you all got a lot already. <laughs> but are you take, speaking out from your mouth? Eternal life. Because we understand we are in the spiritual realm now, spiritual world. The words that we speak are spiritual, are life. Provided they are God's words. <laughs> That's why it's so urgent to put God's word inside until it becomes like part of you. Uh, last, um, when we went to walk, first time I hear Abigail talk, you know, for what the, uh, God is able to do all, you know, all things, not as a quoting, but as part of conversation. This is what it means. This, like I talk to you, it's like a conversation like that, but it comes up with God's word. This is what needs to happen in your life. All right. When you put God's word in, every day meditate, speak, confess, you'll come to a time this will happen. You begin to speak God's word and it doesn't come out as if it is religious. It comes out as if it's part of you. Now he's in you and you're speaking his word out without like sounding, you, you know, you're Christian, you're religious, but your wisdom is coming out. What wisdom? God's word. Right? You don't have to think and quote which scripture, what scripture, where. It's coming out naturally, right? God is able to do exceeding abundance. You're talking to people and you're just talking like that. Okay, but it doesn't happen by magic, okay? <laughs> it happened how? Yes, you keep speaking into you first. Keep speaking, speaking, because why? For 20, 30, 40, 50 years, whose word is inside you? Mother, dad, father, grandfather, the teacher and all that, right? Which is earthly wisdom. So now start to put God's word. And only way is speaking aloud. Okay, when you speak aloud, it goes in. Then one day it becomes part of your conversation. Then there you will shine as lights in the universe. In the universe, our light is to shine in the whole world, holding out the words of eternal life. So it's a cheerful life. And here, just talk, talking about Rebecca, okay? Because Isaac married Rebecca, okay? So Rebecca, we have one here, is the wife of Isaac, spiritual, spiritual part, okay? So Isaac means laughter and means Jesus, okay? So the, who is the mother of Jacob and Esau. She was also the sister of Laban and the aunt of Jacob's future wives, Rachel and Leah. So Rebecca is your mother, is it? <laughs> Correct, ah? Uh? Okay. All right. So Rebecca, and you have, I'm not going to go detail yet into uh, Rebecca's name, but uh, because Rebecca is connected with laughter. Ah, Jacob, uh, Isaac, okay, with Jesus. And her, her, the word, and she has, of course, her characters in her, uh, in her name. And she was a very um, happy woman, okay, and very generous person, and very kind and caring, and so very beautiful. She watered all the camels, that means of uh, Abraham's servant who was sent to find a bride for his son Isaac. So, the Rebecca's are chosen by God to be Jesus' bride. So, specially chosen because God told, uh, Abraham told the servant to go find a bride for my son, Isaac. Yeah? So, whoever God called you, Rebecca, you are chosen by God, right? To be married to Jesus Christ, your Lord. And this is your nature, your character, right? To care for his children to care for even the animals the beasts all right all that belong to god okay rebecca then later left her home in obedience she never questioned the servant right never questioned but follow the holy spirit the direction and brought and the servant brought her brought him back to abraham to marry isaac okay to marry jesus christ you don't have to look for a person called isaac okay but Isaac represent Jesus and represent laughter. The Hebrew name Rebecca is written as this one. You can uh, check the different characters uh, with the hay inside. In Hebrew, it means to basically tie or bind together. So Rebecca was tied to Isaac, all right, and tied to Jesus Christ, bound, all right, and bound to 
today we learn the meaning of Isaac. Laughter, okay? Where you are tight. Jesus did all that for you. And Rebecca also re resembled the bride of Jesus today. All of us, the new creation, we are the bride of Christ. We are tied to Jesus, all right? And he gives us joy, laughter, okay? All the days of our life will be filled with laughter. And some of you are men, you know, be pouring out that laughter into your life because laughter brings that light to the world. I haven't labored among you for nothing, for our lives are the fruit of my ministry, will be glorious boasts of the unveiling of Christ. Christ is unveiled to the world through the bride. We are the bride, right? We enter the world living a cheerful life. But because we have Jesus, I will rejoice. See the word many times, rejoice. I will rejoice even if my life is poured out like a liquid offering to God over your, our, your sacrificial and surrendered lives of faith. And no matter what, so Paul is serving the Lord, no matter what happens to me, you should rejoice in aesthetic celebration with me. Paul exhorts the church in Philippi to always rejoice, always be happy, always be cheerful, right? even whatever they are going through. And the last verse, Psalms 1 to 6, 1 to 2. It was like a dream come true when you freed us from our bondage and brought us back to Zion. We laughed and laughed and overflowed with gladness. There are going to be more laughter, right, soon. We were left shouting for joy and singing your praise. And all the nations saw it. That's why we have a good sound system. <laughs> now everyone can hear the laughter also. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, holy laughter. Can okay, hear very clearly already. You see, everyone, all the nations saw it. Even in Zoom can see. And they joined in saying what? The Lord has done great miracles for them. The Lord has done great miracles for us. So in the world, we only laugh when we see the manifestation, when we see the blessing. But what is the meaning of that? The, is when He freed us from our bondage. So in the physical, it was the children of Israel come out from Egypt. But today, our deliverance is what? We have been saved from, come out from the kingdom of darkness. We have been saved from sin, we have, from bondage, right? And now we are free. Happy? <laughs> okay, so we don't need to wait for the manifestation. It already manifested first in our spirit. Recognize your spiritual first. Your spiritual deliverance is Christ has taken you out from sin has made you righteous, has made you holy, has given you a new beginning. No longer the devil is your father. No longer sin will have rule over you. Right? That is freedom. And then as we follow God's uh, <coughs> word, we will come into more and more manifestation of the blessing. Now, I just suddenly remembered this. <clears throat> the law. Okay. So in the Kuf, there was one exciting uh, point there that I heard this one. It says that when Moses, he received the Ten Commandments, right, from God at Mount Sinai. And the Ten Commandments is what? The handwriting of God. That means God wrote Hebrew letters onto the tablet of stone. Okay? So he brought down the Ten Commandments and by the time he bring down, the people there were, what were they doing? <laughs> yeah, they were sinning, okay? And doing, make, building golden calf, worshipping other gods. And what we read is that uh, uh, Moses threw the Ten Commandments. And this point was brought up because the Ten Commandments is supposed to be very holy, right? It's God's word. And one of the uh, sages or the people said that actually when whether whether Moses threw or he, he he dropped the Ten Commandments but before that happened the letters already left the tablet of stone the Hebrew letters the God's words there already left the tablet of stone and if then without God's word there God's uh, handwriting the stone became very heavy 
and, and uh, he, uh, uh, Moses was already 80 over years old. It was like when the handwriting was there, something like this. Okay, it's just an interesting note, but it has a revelation to, to today, where in the new covenant, God says he write his laws where? In our hearts. So not heavy on the stone. It cannot stay on the stone. Right? Man will still sin when we, we go, when we hear God's word written in law. Thou shalt, thou shalt, thou shalt, or thou shalt not. But today, it's the same commandments because these are the desires of God. Right? He loved us, you know, he don't want us to sin. And he made it possible for us. So in Hebrews, you will read that God write his commandments, his desires now in the new covenant in hearts of flesh. So that if the writings of God, those alphabets can stay there, no more on stone. See how beautiful. So that we today want to obey those commandments, not out of law or heavy of heavy heart. We have given a new heart of flesh, a new spirit, and with this new heart that is soft, that has been made holy and made righteous, we just love His commandments. <laughs> we don't offended by His commandments, but we love it, we obey from a new heart, no more a heart of stone. And then that's why there can be joy. If you are following your mother's orders, angry, you know, no choice. La. If not today, got no dinner. Daddy won't cook. <laughs> then you can laugh or not. You cannot laugh. Right? You are feeling angry, feeling hurt, feeling compulsion. You have to do it. But when you have no this compulsion on you, right? you will feel the joy. Where uh, Rachel said, you never ask me to do anything. But promise me to take me go uh, shopping. So you can laugh the whole day. All right? Actually, God never asks us to do anything anymore. It is from our own heart that we want to do. We want to follow His ways. All right? That's why we said that in tithing offering, God don't require any money from anybody. <laughs> if, we, if we have a God that needs our money, then I also dare not worship this God. He could be poorer than us. <laughs> right? But this God created the whole universe. Yeah? So it is not Him who needs, but we. Right? And we have the joy of just following his commandments and therefore we can live cheerful lives and we can laugh and laugh and to help us to laugh some more the holy spirit come <laughs> and give us what we call holy laughter so you understand this miracle of laughter right from the hebrew letters inside right that this is actually what god has placed in us a new heart a new beginning a new spirit i have given you says the lord i have taken out the old heart of stubbornness, the old heart of sin, self-righteous, all taken out. And today, we just love to follow God. We just love to obey God. And we laugh and laugh. Our mouths are filled with laughter. The world, darkness, one of the things that represent light is laughter. Real joy. Right? In who? The believers. And therefore, you shine when you laugh. Not having to, by force, but it's really... Yeah, when, when afterwards some of you in Zoom, you may see when God begin to pour out His laughter in the hope by the Holy Spirit, they are not laughing <laughs> by, you know, by reason or because they just strike number one in four digit or lottery. Right? It is a work of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's a miracle that God gives us this joy and this laughter and the world will see that the Lord has done great things for or great miracles for us. So we are going to have more and more miracles. But the first miracle, the miracle of born again, is a miracle of laughter. Because we receive righteousness, new life, and holiness by supernatural God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so all our dreams come true, yeah? <laughs> I 